you joined the Air Force in 1941. What was your training like? Well, I did uh, training in Eastern Canada RCF stations and graduated as a wireless operator air gunner. Then I was posted to um, Vancouver Island to Patricia Bay. It was an RAF uh, squadron. Uh, they were, tra we were trained on the torpedo, uh, as a tor tor torpedo training unit, and uh, we uh, flew on Hampton aircraft. We did torpedo drops, bombing, uh, wireless, and uh, 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 gunnery, and did uh, navigational flights. We were then, after four months, we were then posted to England, and the RAF sent us to their training uh, unit, uh, advanced training unit at uh, Turnbury in England. And uh, we had an intensive course there for one month before joining the 415 uh, Hampton Torpedo Squadron in Thorny Island, southeast uh, England. Our primary targets there were German shipping in the Bay of Biscay and uh, convoys uh, moving down the coast uh, from uh, uh, Denmark to uh, France. Did you always fly on <coughs> torpedo bombers? Uh, no, uh, in the end of uh, 1943, because of heavy losses and aging aircraft, uh, we were the squadron changed to uh, Wellington uh, aircraft. They had a longer range. They carried four tons of explosives, and they had a seven-man uh, uh, crew. Uh, so the pilot navigator that I flew with went to another squadron, a 119 uh, dive bomber squadron, and I went with uh, John Enns. Uh, the uh, pilot from uh, Manitoba, and uh, we, the squadron was also moved from Thorny Island to uh, Burton Newton, which was uh, north of London, and we uh, continued with uh, similar uh, targets, uh, convoys uh, moving down the, the coast to supply the German armies. Also, I, uh, uh, we uh, did some pathfinder work, uh, which we then relocated uh, some targets, we would drop flares over them and call in the bowfighters, and they would use uh, rockets, torpedoes, and bombs. And then we would come in afterwards and finish off with our uh, bombing runs. What was one of your most memorable experiences? Uh, well, one was on uh, June the 22nd, three weeks after uh, D-Day. Uh, our targets were ships in the, uh, in the harbor at Ostend, Belgium. Uh, we took off just before midnight, and uh, there was some low patchy cloud that made the target hard to see. So uh, after four runs through the harbor, we decided to go down about 500 feet to locate the target, then come up to 1,500 feet to bomb. By this time, it was getting near morning, and there was a faint glow of uh, light in the eastern uh, sky, and just enough to silhouette the aircraft. So when we came in for the fifth uh, run, uh, about halfway through the, the uh, harbor, they opened up on us, and our worst damage was a uh, port uh, a shell exploded in our port motor, which uh, seized and stopped. John uh, dumped his uh, load of bombs, and uh, we headed for Manston, which about 100 miles away. It was known as the crash airdrome because it had a long runway. And because we were so low, uh, we started throwing everything out of the aircraft, flares and everything like that. I came out of the rear turret and I opened the two ammunition boxes. They uh, carried 8,000 rounds of ammunition on belts, feeding the uh, four guns in the rear turret. Uh, I broke the belts and uh, fed them down the uh, ammunition chute, the flare chute. And uh, though we kind of expected that we would uh, have to ditch in the ocean before getting to Madison, uh, one of the uh, air gunners uh, grabbed the uh, thermos, a gallon thermos of tea and got uh, under the uh, escape hatch, ready to take it into the uh, inflatable raft if we were able to get out of the aircraft. Uh, the, port, the support motor uh, was gone. We had no hydraulics to put the undercarriage down, so the pilot told the uh, second uh, pilot to uh, pump it down on a short uh, pump. It was very stiff. It took about over 200 pumps to, uh, to get it down. After about 100, he said he couldn't pump any more. But uh, John said, uh, just shut up and uh, keep uh, pumping. Anyway, by the time we approached Manson, he had the undercarriage down and it uh, locked. And John called into the control tower to uh, put the uh, lights on the runway. Uh, they uh, put the lights on both ends, uh, but you couldn't see the middle of the runway. And so John told them he couldn't see, and they told us to go around again. But by this time, we were down to treetop level and couldn't go around. So the air was blue between the uh, pilot and the control tower. But uh, finally the uh, lights came on, and with a, a steep turn, we were able to come uh, straight in and make a safe uh, landing in Manson. Did you have any other memorable experiences? 
Uh, yes, about a uh, month before, uh, up by Heligoland, um, we uh, uh, found a, a large uh, convoy coming down that was protected by seven flagships. And again, we had some patchy cloud, and we had to make about six uh, runs over the uh, target uh, on our bombing runs. But uh, it was very successful. We hit a, uh, had a, hit a number of ships, especially one that uh, must have been an ammo ship because it uh, blew up and we left it uh, burning in the water. And uh, the night after D-Day, the 7th of June, we intercepted a uh, formation of e-boats. About 30 in this uh, formation, they were trying to intercept the landing craft and uh, barges that were uh, heading for Normandy with troops. Uh, we, uh, because of the heavy uh, flak coming up, we uh, had to go in on a diving bombing run. It was uh, very successful. The uh, ships all uh, scattered and shut down the motor so that we couldn't see their uh, wake. They, I guess they were expecting that uh, there would be more aircraft coming in. And uh, we shadowed them for about an hour and then they started uh, back to their home bases. Uh, for these and other uh, similar attacks, uh, our pilot John Enns was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and it was presented to him at uh, Buckingham Palace. Did you always fly with the same squadron? And if not, why? Uh, no. Uh, uh, just about two weeks after we attacked the E-boats uh, in July 1944, uh, 415 Squadron was moved to the uh, Midlands in England and uh, they were joining a number six all-Canadian heavy bomber group there. Because our crew and uh, five others were experienced in uh, low-level night flying under the radar screen, the, uh, we were transferred to 524 RAF squadron, but continued this similar kind of uh, targets. What did you do when you finished your tour of operations? Yes, I should say that I stayed with 415 squadron. Uh, we finished flying with 415 squadron, 41 trips and uh, then, uh, reti then, uh, then retired in 19, uh, November 1944. Uh, uh, I was then, uh, our, our crew was then uh, split up and the uh, members went to uh, some stations in England, Scotland and Ireland. As I was a flying officer at the time, I went to uh, uh, Dalecki uh, in Scotland as a briefing officer. That was a rather large uh, squadron, 1100 uh, airmen and it uh, had six squadrons. There were both fighters uh, and they carried rockets, uh, bombs and torpedoes. Uh, there was one uh, British, one Canadian, one uh, Australian, one New Zealand squadron. The backup squadrons was, uh, uh, were uh, one Polish and one uh, Norwegian. The primary uh, targets were uh, German shipping coming down the uh, Norwegian coast and uh, to supplying the German armies through the Bay of uh, Biscay. So there were uh, severe losses it was a very interesting station to be on, and I remained there as briefing officer until the end of the war. I guess to finish off, I'll ask you if you keep in touch with your crewmates. Uh, yes, we have uh, kept in touch. Uh, the, the two crews that I flew with, so they live all across Canada, we have uh, kept in touch quite uh, regularly visiting each other. And uh, I should say that there was only three crews of the originals to start out that were able to finish the tour.